Hey guys, how's it going? This is George from Declan.com and in this video... Hold on. Something's not right. Oh, I'm still on iOS 14. Alright, update to iOS 15. But, there are so many settings that we have to go ahead and change right now in order to make most of the new update, including from improving your battery life and making yourself more private while using the web and many more. So in this video, I'm going to show you 12 settings that you have to change right now in order to make most of your usage on iOS 15. So, let's have a look. Alright guys, so during my research period, I found that iOS 15 was very focused on privacy. So there are a lot of features which can actually make you more private while using the internet. Which I can say finally, because right now we're being more aware of our exposure on the web which comes to the very first setting that you guys have to go ahead and change right now, if not change by default. So for the first setting that you have to change right now, I emphasize this, you have to go to settings and then scroll all the way down until you see Safari. Then scroll down until you see the hide IP address option and make sure you choose from trackers, which means that all of your activity while using Safari and only Safari will be anonymous. So websites, whether they have Google Analytics or any other third party software in order to track your activity on, on how you use a website, how you navigate through the website will be disabled. They won't be able to track you. They won't be able to collect data from your IP address, which basically makes you anonymous and private. And speaking of privacy, we also want to be private while reading emails. So what we want to do is to go all the way back and instead choose mail. And here, go away says privacy protection. From here, make sure protect email activity is turned on, which similar to Safari is going to make your activity while reading emails private as well. So for example, let's say that I send you an email, a spam email, and you open it and I have a signature in it. So I will be able to understand whether you have read the email or not. And basically I'll be able to track you whether you have clicked on the link or not. Well, if you have turned on this option, then forget about it because there's no way me personally to be able to tell whether you have done any of these actions on your end, which is definitely a very cool feature because I use emails a lot and I don't want people to be able to tell whether I have read their emails or not. While right now we're more anonymous while using the web, we want to also prevent any unauthorized access to our accounts. To do this, we need to enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. Again on settings, go to passwords, then choose an account which you want to set up two-factor authentication. And here you'll see all the information, you know, your login name, your password, and some recommendations regarding to make your account more secure. From here, go to the website where you have created the account and find the two-factor authentication settings. Enable them and usually they're going to have a setup key or they're going to have a QR code. And if the website has a QR code, then press on setup verification code on your phone and then choose scan QR code. And by scanning the QR code, it's going to happen very instantly and you'll see a six-digit number which is required when you log in to that account from a different device. And two-factor authentication is a perfect example on how to keep your accounts safer. In keeping up with the pace of privacy, you have noticed that some apps are asking you whether you would like them to track your activity. However, due to our concerns, we don't want anyone to track us anymore. So go back to settings and this time go to privacy. Go to tracking and here you'll see all the apps which you have allowed them to track your activity. So for example, here I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which are tracking the way I'm using them. So what I can do, I can either disable them one by one, or what I can do is to disable allow apps to request to track. And this is going to prevent apps to even ask you whether you want them to track your activity. So in case we're worried about Facebook tracking your personal information and how you use the app, then not anymore because this option is going to prevent this from happening. If you're a big fan of having the longest battery possible in your phone, I mean, who doesn't, then you gotta go ahead and change this setting right now. So on the settings, go on privacy, location services, system services, and here scroll down until you see significant locations. 
you may need to enter your face ID or whatever and disable it. Now, this is not really a concern about your privacy, but for preserving your battery life. Now, you don't really need your iPhone to track you where you go, or where you travel, stuff like that, and keep a log of all the locations that you have been to. So you can very well disable this option so you can save some juice. Then go back to system services and disable any option that you don't need. So for example, I don't use Apple Pay, so I'm gonna disable that. I don't really need compass calibration turned on, so I'm gonna disable this as well. Device management, home kit, system customization, iPhone analytics, routing and traffic. So to be honest, you don't really need many of these options turned on because they are actually consuming a lot of battery life. You can very well go ahead and turn off more of these options, but I always highly encourage you to keep Find My iPhone turned on. So that way, your iPhone will be detected by you through your iCloud account in case you lose it. And speaking of battery life, I've found more settings that you need to change right now in order to make your battery life last longer on your iPhone. And I'm already making a video for this and will be uploaded very soon. So if you want to be the first to watch this video and be notified, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it in order to receive a notification as soon as the video is out. Moving on with a topic that everyone is talking about, especially here in the UK, weather. By opening the weather app, go to those three lines on the bottom right and then go to the three dots on the top right. Select notifications and enable my location on current location. This will allow the weather app to send you a notification when rain or snow is starting or stopping. So this is perfectly in case you're going out and you receive this notification so you can change your plans immediately in order to prevent yourself from getting caught by rain on your way. You can go ahead and enable this feature for more of your locations, but you're gonna be receiving notifications for all of those locations. So be sure to use this feature wisely. Next up, in case you're bombarded with so many notifications, you're gonna love this feature. So by going to settings, go to notifications, and go to scheduled summary. Enable this, and if you're doing this for the first time, iOS 15 is gonna guide you through this feature. But if not, then this feature simply is gonna collect all the notifications from apps that you don't want to receive notifications from immediately and show them at a specified time. So for example, in my case, as you can see, I have one summary where all the notifications from apps that I have enabled down here, they will be sent to me on 1 p.m. every day. And these apps include WhatsApp, Amazon, Books, FaceTime, Find My, Home, Maps, so everything that I don't want to see right away. And in case you want the notifications to be sent to you on another time as well, you can go and tap on this plus button and choose a different time for the second summary. So in my case, I finish with my work daily at 10 p.m. So this is just before I get to sleep. So this is a perfect time for me to see my notifications. And 1 p.m. if you're wondering, this is the time where I have my lunch. So this is also a perfect time for me to also see any non-urging notifications which were sent to me during my morning working schedule. Next up, also outside settings, I'm sure you have noticed that the search bar on Safari is no longer on the top but on the bottom and I'm sure you have tried to look for, for the search bar before you realized that it was actually on the bottom. But if you don't like it on the bottom, then you can always bring it up. So you go to Safari, you go to those two A's on the bottom left and then choose show top address bar. But if you do that, you're gonna lose the ability to swipe to the left or right tab. So simply it's not gonna be possible even if you swipe it on the top. So if it's something that you got used to it, swiping to the left or the right, you can always go ahead and put it back down by pressing on those two little A's on the top left and then press on show bottom bar. I personally managed to get used to, to the bar being on the bottom because I use the beta version of iOS 15. But if you haven't, then I encourage you to give it another shot because it's a lot more convenient to swipe from the left to the right to switch tab, especially if you have so many tabs open on your phone. Were you ever playing your favorite game and then suddenly someone sends you a message and basically you lose and you start all over again? Yes, that happens to me a lot. Or while shooting a video, because I like shooting my videos on my iPhone, then someone may call me during that time and as you know i get distracted the good news are is that you can actually enable automatically do not disturb while using specific apps 
And the way to do this is to go to settings again, go to focus, go to do not disturb, and then on the bottom, choose add schedule or automation. Then go to app and choose the app which will automatically enable do not disturb. So I'm going to choose camera in my case. And then if I close settings and go back to camera, you'll notice that do not disturb has been enabled as you can see on the very top. I really like this feature because it gives us the ability to do this even when you are in a specific location. So go back to add schedule or automation, location, and you can search an address to choose. So you can choose your work address. So if you're working on an office, you can choose that. And then when you arrive to the office, do not disturb will be automatically turned on. And when you leave the office, again, do not disturb will be turned off. How cool is that? Next up, while you're using multiple apps on your phone, they will eventually ask you to allow your microphone and stuff like that, basically track what you are doing. And it will be very convenient if you could have a weekly report telling you exactly which apps have been tracking you and how. To do this, the extremely easy is to go to settings, go to privacy, and scroll the way down and go to record app activity. Enable this option, and this feature is gonna save a seven day summary of when apps are accessing your data. And by the way, you can always go ahead and save the app activity, and this is gonna be saved as a file, and unfortunately, as this feature is not completed yet, in the future, you'll be seeing the activity just below save app activity in a format which is very easy for you to read. If you're a heavy app user and you jump from app to app to use, you'll notice that some apps may have different defaults. So one app may display the letters larger in a text compared to another app, or some apps may not have dark mode at all. And you would like to use dark mode anyways, so head over to settings, go to accessibility, scroll the way down to per app settings. And here you can go to add app and choose an app that you would like to set some defaults. In this example, we're going to choose Amazon. Then tap cancel, go to Amazon and tap on smart invert. Tap on. And if you go now to the Amazon app, you'll notice that it's actually pretty similar to dark mode. And you can touch other settings such as increasing the text. So for example, I can go back and go to Twitter and then choose a larger text. So I can increase the slide up. And if I go on Twitter, you'll notice that the text is actually presented way larger. However, please keep this in mind that not every setting is work for every app. For example, for YouTube, larger text doesn't work. And for Amazon, also larger text doesn't work. But I thought of including this setting because I think there is a big potential in the future which will allow you even more customization on the basic settings of your apps. This is what I believe, but I hope it's going to come true. And moving on to the last one, we love our control center. It's very easy to use and it has many settings which we want to use on the go instead of going to settings and, you know, doing all these steps. But as you can see mine, it doesn't have all the settings that I want. So what you're going to do is to go to settings, go to control center, and here you can go ahead and add more shortcut settings. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and add dark mode, low battery mode, because I take a lot of notes on the go, screen recording, text size, and also voice memos. Now you can go and test your control center. And here are all the settings shortcuts that you have just added. And don't worry about the order because you can always change it by holding down all those three lines. Lastly, you can remove any setting if you no longer want it by pressing on the minus button and press on remove. Now, although this is not an iOS 15 feature, but I thought of including this because on every iOS release, more shortcuts are being available. And so it will be cool to keep an eye on it in order to add more options when they become available. Now that's it, that's everything. You can now enjoy browsing the web anonymously as well as using social media without the companies being able to track you and as well as to extend your battery life but a little bit. However, I'm still making more videos about iOS 15 including how to save your battery life, tips and tricks on iOS 15 and if you want to be the first person to watch this video then I highly encourage you to hit the subscribe button and notification bell right next to it in order to be the first person to receive the notification and watch this video. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the like button 
down on the right and let me know if I forgot any important settings down in the comment section. And lastly, if your friends are updating to iOS 15, don't forget to share this video to them in order to tell them about these privacy settings in order for them to stay private as well. Thanks for watching guys and as always, I'm gonna see you in my next video.